Hey guys, welcome back to episode two of the Comic Book Girl 19 show, radio show, podcast extravaganza. Uh, I think it's called the CBG 19 podcast for now. Whatever. I think officially that's what we're going to do. Anyways, it. we're going to talk about our polls this week from the comic book shop and take a bunch of questions from Twitter and Facebook. So Sounds good. Should we just get right into it? Let's just get right into it. What did we pick up today? All right. Well, let's start with, let's, let's talk about Spider-Man, Superior Spider-Man. Superior Spider-Man is still really, really good. Still really good. It's still really, really good, and I'm, I'm really excited about it, and I was excited for Doc Ock when he got to be the hero and, like, help save the little girl with his own invention, and, you know. He, he got really excited. He was like, oh, now I get to put on my hero pants. Yeah, and... yeah, that was really awesome. And, yeah, it's just... It's... Wait, wait, why don't you guys back up for anyone that's a noobler Ugh. about what's happening in This isn't for fucking story. noobler's, dude. Doc Ock is in Spider-Man's body. Spider-Man's consciousness is still around, and Spider-Man's consciousness is trying to figure out how a way to get back. And now Doc Ock may have found a way to get rid of Peter Parker's consciousness. Oh, okay, thanks. That was nice. Yeah, That was well, really hard for you, too, wasn't it? It was. <laughs> Fuck you, Nibblers. <laughs> okay, continue. So, so yeah, Dan Slot, way to fucking go, man. But here's the funny part I like about the Dan Slot run is that sometimes you feel like it's getting kind of like he's writing it for kids, mm-hmm. like it gets kind of like young and like young reader. It's, it's and then, very E for everyone in and, a lot of ways. And then it turns really dark, really unexpectedly. Yeah, like there have been some pretty gnarly, oh yeah, like grisly scenes. And oh yeah, especially when. Definitely. Doc Ock kind of loses control I, because of the Spider-Man power. I will say and, I hated uh, what's her face in this doing that line from the movie, Black Widow in this being uh, like you've got red in your ledger, and I was like shut the fuck up, like yeah, who like, said fuck uh, off, like I wonder if they're trying to do that though so that like the Nooblers go oh oh but that was in the movie that was in the movie I get it now I know and it's like it's like oh. fuck you like. Ugh. Don't do that. But anyways, <laughs> that was very small. It was very minor. But it's it's still a really fun read, and yeah. the ending's really great. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the ending. I want to talk about that, because mm-hmm. you, you should just read it, and we're going to spoil it for you. Um, Doc Ock, Spider-Man, figures out that there is a little bit left in of Peter yes. somewhere in the back of his mind. Right. And so he figures out a way to do what he calls it a, a Peter Parker ectomy. Yeah. He's going to try to get rid of the last part of him. going to do the purge. But what I really hope happens the next issue is that, because Doc Ock is learning how to be a superhero. Yeah. That it isn't, oh, I'm going to get rid of Peter Parker once and for all. I really want to see something happen where, like, he gets, he him. gets rid of him, but then, like, stores him somehow and goes, okay, so how do I get Peter a new body and a second chance at life? That would be really cool. That's what I would really like to see. I would like to see it get messed up whatever he's trying to do and end up like fusing both of them together so from now on like they're both two people and they just have to like and, like one takes over once work. in a while yeah and... like i think that could be well, wait a minute no you can't keep doing this forever well i don't know i mean maybe not forever but this I'm just is saying, fun for now but sure this, but, but like this is two added, years from now come on this has added a whole new dimensionality to peter parker who in yeah. my opinion was getting pretty stale city you know and i'm sick of seeing him do the same shit and i just i like the fact that he's got you know I don't know. But the introduction of, of the Doc Ock element, it's that he now takes responsibility for his private life. Yeah. He's there for Aunt May when she really needs him. And he's there for his work when they really need him. Mm-hmm. And he's found really ingenious scientific yeah. ways to be both Peter Parker and Spider-Man. And I kind of like the fact that Peter's kind of in the background getting his nose rubbed in it. Like, right. Like, oh, why didn't... That's actually a really good idea. Like, why didn't I do it like ah, that? spider bot. Yeah. Ah, and you hook it up to your fucking iPad. Oh, and he's got so an easy. app on the phone that yeah. alerts him, like, of dire emergencies. Uh, and so that's smart. when he knows that's the stuff he needs to go take care of. Yeah, so that's a really good one. Another yeah. one that has been, you know, in the X family, I guess let's go talk about the X okay, family. Okay, cool. Uh, Uncanny X-Men and Wolverine in the X-Men are still... Still going strong. Uncanny X Men is really like been surprising me. Yeah, I I was always kind of nervous because Bendis was going to take over the yeah. X titles, and he's knocking it out of the park with this title. Yeah, so uh, all their powers have been broken by the Phoenix Force, and they're all kind of figuring out ways of how to deal with this, what they're going to do about it, what's go- what is what is even going on. Yeah, and especially with the introduction of the, all the new mutants that are starting to pop up around the world. And some of these kids have really amazing powers, and some of them have kind of lame powers. Yeah. But I feel like the senior 
X-Men on the team are kind of leaning hard on the new mutants. Yes. To kind of cover their back a little bit. Yes, absolutely. To cover up the fact that their powers are broken. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, hey, it's a time stop girl. Like, yeah. we need you to single-handedly stop the Avengers right now. Because right, we can't do shit. Because we right can't now. really do it. Yeah, and I, I love the fact that Magic, she's finally being addressed in, like, her problems, where she's, like, getting sucked into limbo, which has never happened before. That's And that's a good thing, because they've always talked about this dark side that she's had, and mm-hmm. they've always alluded to it, but we've never actually seen, like, a writer or, or one of the issues yeah. finally address it. Well, she has a really... Re- crazy ridiculous story and it's like really hard to keep up with like all the ins and outs of what's been going on with her but right. uh they're trying you know they're trying to kind of do that like take her story and kind of make it something that's palatable that mm-hmm. you can understand but even she admits in the comic that even she doesn't understand her whole story which i thought was kind of a nice shout out to the to the people who read and especially if like you're kind of into that whole different world of the marvel titles dormammu shows up i know i was not expecting dormammu anywhere near Uncanny X Men. Yeah, yeah, and I and I like that he's just like your shit is fucking up my shit yes. now. Yes, you know, and fuck you, you don't know what the fuck you're doing, you little mutant girl. Like you like, know, and, and like calling her out is like you're a child, literally, and like, you have yeah. no idea of like what you're meddling with. Yeah, and and then, but I love that you know uh, when she dark childs out. Like I love the way they had this guy Fraser Irving on right. it, and which is a really odd style, but it works so well. And I love the way he draws her as dark child. Like it's so. That his awesome. actually all the art for just this title alone yeah. really worked with the story, yeah. and I realize sometimes maybe they have to switch up the artist in order for the main artist to kind of keep the schedule going. Mm-hmm. But this doesn't feel like a filler issue, right? If yeah, this yeah. feels like it's, this works for magic because magic's weird, yeah. and I like seeing a weird artist doing stuff for magic. It's awesome, um, but. Yeah, Uncanny X-Men's doing great. Uh, Wolverine and the X-Men, I'm not a huge fan of the Savage Land thing, but... Why not? I don't know. I just, I want them to get back to the fucking school and just be at the school for a moment, you oh, know? Like, please. Yeah. This field trip's been going on for, like, three issues, right? Yeah, but it's <laughs> it's done now. It's, like, it's over. It's, it's, but I like the way it ended. And don't forget, I mean, now we're 28 issues into the series. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like, Jason what? Aaron has done a great job with it. And especially mm-hmm. with how it first started out. Yeah. Kind of mind-blowing. I, I know a lot of people who are huge fans of, like, the Origin mm-hmm. miniseries were probably pretty excited to see Logan's family come back yeah. and show up. And especially really unexpectedly in this title. Yeah. But it's it feels weak. Right. It's like, dog, it's like, get out of here, dog. Like, you know. Yeah. Like, like no one really cares. But I do like the ending. Yeah. It's a, I feel like it's a weaker storyline. But the ending is really great because it is showing... The, the the growing up and evolution of Wolverine. Yeah, how he's like, you're just gonna have to kill me then, dude. Like yeah. he, he could kill his brother, but he just he's like, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give you the fucking Yeah, not every answer is we kill the person because it's a problem. Yeah. And especially with how Scott Summers and the new Xavier school is very mo- militant. Yeah, very and proactive they're arming themselves and, and they're aggressive. they're waiting for the war. Uh Wolverine's uh new Jean Grey school is very much about there are other si- right. solutions. They're trying to, these to be problems. passive. They're trying, yeah, they're trying like passive solutions to problems versus like aggressive solutions, which you know I think is is really interesting, especially for obviously Wolverine. Yeah, you know, and, and like in the end, it's it's him being taking the passive route because you know if he's gonna die, at least he's gonna die teaching these kids, these new mutants, like the lesson that he's trying to teach them. Yeah, by through example. Oh, definitely, and I I will say that when. I guy or I boy, but I like to call him I guy because that just it seems like it that works. fits better. Yeah, I wasn't excited about his new character. I was like, who is this fucking asshole with all these eyes? You know, like I don't care. Yeah, I don't like I boy that much either. But in this <laughs> issue, he finally got his now due. Mudbug. <laughs> Mudbug's the best. Do not, do I, not I get, want a whole issue on Mudbug. Do not get T bug. Just an issue. On Mudbug. I want a whole series. Mudbug <laughs> gets its own series. Well, the thing is though, well, now sure, but let's not be too hopeful. We might get to see more Mudbug since Glob Herman. Decides to go off with Sauron to the uh, oh. Hellfire School, and that's where Mudbug is. So maybe oh, that's right. there'll be a tie in there. Well, and, and I love Glob too, so that's that would be awesome. Yeah, yeah Herman is a fun character because <laughs> I think if you follow the character long enough and you know his uh, roots with the or the the Morrison, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, he's kind of. Like, like, he was in the quote-unquote special class. Right, he's borderline retarded, and I'm not saying, like, oh, he's retarded. I'm saying, no, he's literally, like, Like, he's not, he's not there all the way, and so everyone still has all, like, this hope and 
like really wants to see him do well. But, he, but he just keeps making these stupid decisions, and as like a longtime reader of the character, yeah. it's just a huge face palm. I'm like, oh, of course. I know. Well, it's like, well, I love that. So I guy at first I was like, what is he gonna do? He's gonna get his eyes poked out all the time. You yeah, know? he's but even then, got eyes in his shins. I mean, come on. I know, but then, but then in this one, he's like, wait a minute. I can see things like, and like he really goes in and he like starts like doing these like emotional breakdowns and like seeing the truth of people and why they act the way they do and right. then brings it to their attention and calls them out with it. And then the fact that he can see magic and then the fact like there's a lot you can do with the idea of him being able to see. He's things, all seeing, which is fucking interesting. Like yeah, that's yeah. like that I can get okay. You know, like you won me over. Like all right, I, the, I and especially when they take the guns away and he's got like that little uh, uh, thought bubble where he's like. But I was cool for like thirty seconds. <laughs> I know, I know, and that's so funny that like he knows that he sucks, you know, yeah. like, and that's that's great. But yeah, a character that sees other people's psychology and breaks it down is fun. Yeah, definitely, definitely. definitely. So yeah, I mean, although Aaron, isn't this like Aaron's last one coming up? I don't know. I don't I, say I, that. I, I don't heard, want that to. I don't no. know. Well, I feel like Aaron's done a great job with the characters, um, and I love characters, and that's like why I love this so much. Mm -hmm. But sometimes he doesn't have the plot to go with the characters sometimes, it seems. Okay. Like, there hasn't been, like, a, a a big plot, you know, going right. on, which is fine. I don't always need one. I do enjoy issues and, and smaller arcs and stuff like that, three-issue arcs of, of stories. That's cool. But right. I would like to see a real arc. Like, though. what's the end game? Yeah, like, I want to see, like, at least a six-issue... Like how X-Force from the entire run was beginning, middle, and end. And, yes, they did have to go off and do, like, these side missions, but there was a, a full... Story to be told. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of teenage uh, Okay, moving on. We're going to move on to Young Avengers now. <laughs> Thanks for that. You need these transitions. I, I didn't have it in hand. You were. It's not just for you guys. It's for us when we're editing, editing the show, too. <laughs> well, we That's got right. the Young Avengers going on, and damn it all, it is so fucking good. I, there's a lot of naysayers on this title. Really? I, who? Anybody who Can comments I? on our threads. Well, yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm sure they'll, they'll make themselves known really quickly. Um, well, have they actually read it and they're complaining or complaining about it? I don't know how you existing. could... How do I... Well, I don't know. I mean, I guess I can see how some people might not be into this and it might not be for them, but this is definitely for me. Like, I really enjoy it and I think it's super solid. I love all the new characters. I'm interested in every single new character, even though I don't even know who most of them I'm really still waiting. Are, I'm still waiting know? to get the backstories, but... Yeah, like... It's amazing. It, it really is. It's just... It's written so... It's just so and it's, relevant and fresh. And, and I, I really want to talk about why it's good. It's good because the art is killer. Oh, man. Like... I mean, Gillian and McKelvey have always made a great team. We've talked about this before. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's it's good because of like the layout and the design yeah. of the panels. Well, McKelvey is just and he's really grown a lot. I mean, since Phonogram, like Phonogram, Phonogram was good. It was solid. No, it's really like, solid. But this is just a whole new level, in my opinion. And I and he's doing such a great job with it. When he's learning how to, to draw different angles, and I mean, mm -hmm. I don't. Maybe he never actually expected himself to be the type of comic doing book artist who's going to be doing superhero yeah. stuff, but. He's God damn, job. man. Yeah, I oh, love... Oh, wow, that's an awesome panel. I know, right, I we're actually it. looking at the issue right now, but it's it's so good. Yeah, there's a two-page spread where it just shows a diagram of, like, the Novar breaking in, kicking everyone's ass, and it has, like, a little one, two, three, four, so you can kind of follow his action around the club. That is really fun. I haven't seen that in a comic book. <laughs> yeah. I've never seen it and either. There's, even, there's even a little key explaining, <laughs> like, how badass he is in each scene. And then on these little side That's panels fun. around it, it's like, oh, this is for 12, so this is what's happening right here. You know, here's oh, 10. Oh, wow. It's go, really cool. Just go pick it up just for this splash panel. Yeah. And then if you flip this the page... This is issue number three? Four. Yeah, four. four. Yeah. And then flip the page again. I wish you guys could see it. But there's this amazing, sexy, strike a pose and look badass after handling like all the business page. Mm -hmm. And his line is, come with me if you want to be awesome. <laughs> okay. Like after being I'm sorry, anyone that just came up with that idea for a panel, this book has got to be great. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. It is. And, and, like, and I love uh, how all the characters are interacting with one another. I love Kid Loki. Mm -hmm. like, I love that, you know, he's just... Says that he was Tyrion and that he's just like, oh, just trust me and nobody will trust him. Nobody and, trusts Loki. You know, and this still is still, good reason, you know? and it is the same Loki from Thor mm. and all that. Yeah. And like I said, we've been talking about how we don't really know the characters that well or where they came from, what their backstory is. But I did find out that Gillian was writing Journey into Mystery for a really long time. Mm -hmm. And apparently that, his whole story arc was Loki's story and becoming Kid Loki and all that. So I really want to go back and read Definitely. that. Definitely. And 
My right. favorite part was when, you know, Loki starts talking to Hulkling and saying, you know, you realize you're dating a reality warper and that it's just odd that you happen to go to the same high school and that you happen to be gay and then you happen to fall in love with this guy. It's just too perfect. Like, like you, And you just happen to be a really good looking prince. Right. Like yeah. all the coincidences. It's like, it's like you're, so Loki tells him, he's like, and you are a very lovely daydream. Like, and he's like, and you know what? Like, he doesn't necessarily have to choose it. He just has to have a daydream about it. And, right. And, like, it happens. So, I mean, he's questioning the reality of their relationship, which is really interesting. Well, especially if you think about Hulkling, it's, you know, first he's normal, so mm-hmm. that's his sensitive side. Right. And then he kind of, like, gets buff and tough for when he needs to protect him. Yeah. So, it really, it maybe he is, like, a match, like, the it, perfect thing be, conjured it's, up. It's a little too perfect, yeah. you know, but it's it's great, and I'm just excited. I'm so excited about Young Avengers. I can't wait to keep reading it and see where all this goes. And, and once again, it's going to be one of those things it. where, like, the team will stick on for a while, and then one day they'll, they'll switch gears, and I'll be really I sad. I will be so sad. Really sad. So sad. Well, what else do we pick up today? Well, let's talk about some indie stuff. Okay. All right. First up, we're going to talk about Haunted War. <laughs> Play the Tales from the Crypt theme now. <laughs> well, I've been picking up these haunted horrors, and they're four bucks, you know, it's like a dollar more, but it's totally worth it. They're super thick, they're printed on really nice paper, and they're just these great reprints of old 50s horror stories. Right. And I just read, read one last night called Love from a Plant. I pretty much narrated the entire thing for T Bone. Um, just for kicks. And it's just like this guy, and he's like, has this shitty wife who's a bitch to him all the time. And then he figures out how to make this plant fall, like this plant, he knocks something over, and the plant kind of falls in love with him or something. And then he's like, well, if I can make the plant love, I can make it hate. And he gets the plant to murder his shitty wife. And then he's like talking to the plant, and he's excited. And the then, wife who's always jealous that he's in the greenhouse all the time. Right. Yeah, <laughs> with, and she's like fat. With the plant. Stuff. Yeah, with the plant. And then, um, so she gets murdered, and then. When he's like talking to the plant, the plant ends up just, like trying to hug him or something, and then kills him. Ah, so he's gotcha. By his own creation, but yeah, it's it's. But they're usually hilarious. little fun morality tales, just like tales. From yeah, the and they're super simple and like. Well, it's, this it's like the old EC comics. Like yeah. this was the old stuff that uh, that tales from the crypt and yeah. all those like stories came like all those shows came, originally came from right and and, and yeah. for the like um, that type of comic. And I feel like for the, you know, the collector people or whatever, it's like, this This is a comic that I feel like would be worth something. Not that I'm buying it because I want to, you know, whatever. No, but... but the I originals mean, would be worth something. Well, you're right, no, but reprints are worth shit, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, and they didn't, this shit. And then didn't last month when the, the issue came out, it was the original oh, the, woman the with the skull. Yes, it was the Misfits. With the like, glass, die, die, my die, die my darling. Yeah. And the Misfits used that cover and that became like one of the most yeah, popular and like that shirts and never, like, you know, got shit for it as no. usual, you know. So, fuck you artists. But that's that's that Why do you whole st- like feeling it is, know. you know. It's that But yeah, that's that's just a fun one. Um, but uh, we also have East of West, uh, Hickman. I got picked up number 2. Oof. East of West number 2. Uh, I am real I'm in. I'm all in on this one. I'm I need you to and it's these Hickman. And read these. Yeah, and that's the thing. It is Hickman and I'm in on this. You know, it's got all this weird I, alternative okay. history stuff and like four horsemen of the apocalypse crap and like Antonia Le- LeVay shows up. <laughs> that's, I I'm in. You know what I'm saying? Like it's got, and, it's by got the, Antonio LeVay was the leader of the uh church Anton LeVay was Anton. Like, yeah, it's a female so version. So it's a female one. version yeah. of Anton LeVay. Yeah, but he yeah, he was a but famous really cool. Um so it's yeah. it's pretty it's pretty hilarious. I I've been really enjoying it a lot. Cuz I mean, I guess I need to say, I need to come clean. Hickman's Avengers I've pretty much fallen off the wagon on. Uh, and I'm still buying the issues. I'm going to wait until the arc's done mm-hmm. and then I'll read it all at the same time. Yeah. But it really bums me out that East of West is coming out so well and doing so great. Right. But in his Avengers runs, I feel like his characters are really confused about what's going on. And I'm also just as <laughs> Every, confused is. Yeah. as the characters in, in the Avengers comics are. Yeah, that's... And I want to believe that like I'm an intelligent reader and I'm very cognitive and I can well, understand you, you this are, stuff. You are. That's the thing. So it's I, like, I hate stories that make you think that you're stupid. That, like, get well, it's almost like, Am insulting. I Am I stupid? And you're like, no, wait a minute. And, like, I, and I will read these issues like two, three, four times. And if you want reread value, like, there you go. That's a really good yeah. way to do it. But yeah. yeah. So it kind of bumps me out that East of West is really awesome. Yeah, so I would definitely... Meanwhile, my Avengers issues are like, uh uh-huh. Well, I also picked up Jupiter... Jupiter's Legacy number one. <laughs> What's that about? I've never heard of it. 
It's uh, the new Mark Millar and Frank Quietly book, uh, where it's about, it's kind of taking a look at the children of superheroes, like, oh, there's these first generation superheroes, and now they have children, and like, the world, I don't know, there's still a lot to be decided, I don't know exactly what's going on. It's with only it the first, it's first issue, issue but, but it's I'm Millar. In. Yeah. That's all you need to know. And, and it's Frank Whiteley. Yeah, and I'm, I'm and in on both counts. I love yeah. his art. Yeah, no, so much. I do too. I love the way he draws like costumes like so much. Like he draws he and he just like will pull out a costume like there's so he's drawn more fucking costumes than probably any fucking guy I've seen out there. Like Yeah, and he's always like he's really proficient with it. Yeah, he's you know? I don't know. I love the softness of his I like how organic his stuff looks. I don't know. I love it. So so far I'm in. I'm okay. excited about it. Um it seems like it's gonna be a good one. I'm excited. Now when I'm I'm not digging that I'm supposed to be digging according to all the hype. It's, and I'm um, not. Sex. Sex. That's not just the us comic. talking about sex. Like, the actual title of the comic is called Sex. Now, after, two. after reading two issues, I feel like it's kind of a fucking gimmick, you know? Yeah. And it's like, like, oh, sex. But, like, I've seen crazier stuff in The Boys. I've seen crazier stuff in Flex Mental. I've seen, like, all sorts of <coughs> crazier sex shit in the filth. Like, I've seen stuff that's crazy. And, and this is not crazy. No way. You're telling me a book called Sex is just a gimmick? I mean, there's some sex <laughs> in it, but I mean, it's just like, I don't well, know. And, I think, and I'm glad I you brought up The Boys, because The Boys, I think, is the most, uh, it's such an awesome title, uh, uh, Garth Ennis. But I think The Boys talk about sex amongst superheroes yeah. in a way that I kind of think it more believable. Right. Like, if in even reality... Even if it's terrible. It yeah, even if it's horrible, horrible and disgusting and yeah. really depraved, um... But like if you in the real world, if you were to get superpowers mm-hmm. and you just get bored and your ego gets yeah, completely insane. Completely inflated, like yeah. the boys talked about like the sexual depravity of like those people. Right. This, I don't Yeah, and that's I the mean, thing too. Like this is supposed to be about what happens when superheroes retire and the sex sexuals I, I I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to believe with this. I don't know. And I, just, I really I want to get behind what they're doing with the uh the dialogue as far as like uh, the design and the color behind well, certain yeah, words. Yeah, there's, like, the yeah, there's like little color squares behind certain specific words in the word balloons, but I find it distracting. Really? Like, I don't know. I, I was thinking about it last night well, while what, I was reading What do the colors it. emphasize? Just a word of whatever word they're trying to emphasize, you know? I Like, I don't know if, like, the color's supposed to maybe relate the feeling or the mood of what of how the word's being said. Well, whatever it is, it's not working. I don't know. It's oh, and the, well, for me at least. And then the biggest slap in the face is right on the front cover. Right on the front cover, right it says cover. collector's item. Collect, like fuck you, like fuck you. I will tell you whether this is a yeah. fucking collector's item or not. You let me be you the judge. You of don't it. tell me. Like I tell you. Let the fans be the judge of whether you know? it's a collector's item or not. And that's and that's the well, thing. Well, is though. there another issue that is not the collector's item? No, the first one was really. Big. So they're all the collector's item. So everything's a collector's item according to these guys. Right, but it's like, eh, no. Don't huh. forget to say the receipt proving that you bought the collector's I item. Know. Come on, like get out. Well, know. I mean, it is called sex, and he said that might be a gimmick. It is, and I, so, I don't know. Well, maybe I don't know. I just feel like right. sex just, is a gimmick in general. I just feel like I'm not going to pick up the third <laughs> issue. Is what I feel like. So yeah, I mean, that's well, just the truth that, of it. that's a shame. Well, for what if the third issue is where something happens? So you don't know. I mean, I don't know. I mean, if it, if it turns out to be really great, then I'll shut the fuck up and I'll apologize. But as of right now, after reading two issues, I just do not care. <laughs> Meh. I find nothing to care about. All um, right. Well, good it stack this week, though. Yeah, yeah. It, it was a good stack this week. Yeah, really, really good. Yeah, I was, I was happy with the with the stack. It was, it was I good mean, one. there's other there's stuff that you picked up, or no, I picked up that you didn't. But well, what do you want to talk? about? Oh, uh, the new Venom is still yeah. amazing. I know a lot of people probably rolling their eyes at that, <laughs> but the new art that they got uh, is really relates to the uh, the mood of what Flash Thompson's going through right now. Mm-hmm. And what issue it, number is that? That's oh shoot, I didn't, I don't have it with me. Whatever, it's, it's awesome. One, whatever. It's the new one. But the cool part is for like diehard Spidey readers, um, Flash Thompson now has the Venom symbiote, but it's sedated thanks to Hank McCoy and uh, Hank Pym. Mm-hmm. And now he's it's a good guy, but he doesn't have necessarily as much power and ferocity as the symbiote would normally want him to have. So there are times when Flash loses control and he, he literally Venom's out and yeah. it's pretty badass. But the all you need to know that's going on in the title right now is that, uh, oh, uh, Eddie Brock's back. Yeah. Oh. But it's not the weird, you know, sad, sympathetic. I'm trying to rid the world of symbiotes like in a holy war. Eddie Brock. Mm-hmm. Like Eddie Brock's pissed off, and now he's bonded with the toxin symbiote. Okay. And both the toxin symbiote and Eddie Brock hate the venom symbiote. <laughs> 
and now yeah. we've got some old so school. So you got some like jelly like yeah. yeah. Know? And it's totally like it's it's this really great thing where it's the old school Eddie Brock. Yeah. It's the old school. I'm a badass, and yeah. I and I, I want to torture and, and bitter, haunt you, and I hate. I want to play. I want to toy with you. I want what you have. Yeah. You know? Like, and I really, it's, it is weird because, like, I feel like the symbiotes fall in love with their hosts. Yeah. So when the hosts reject them, the symbiotes get really, really, really bitter. Yeah. So Toxin really hates the Venom symbiote. Right. And Brock hates the Venom symbiote. So now that they've joined forces, they're like, this is, wow, this is, like, happening in my real life right now. It's like these two really <laughs> weird, bitter people going after an ex-lover. Yeah. It's badass. I like that. I like that angle yeah. a lot. Like, that's way more that interesting. Oh, so, I mean, I know it's kind of, like, lower down. Like, Venom is kind of like a B-list character as far as like the Spidey universe goes, but it, it's still... He's got a good story. He's got a good it's great. story. Yeah, it's great. Uh, have you been reading Age of Ultron? A lot of people have been asking about yeah, that. Yeah, I have. How do you um, feel about it? Um, Actually, I kind of want... You had some really good points, and I want you to say them first. <laughs> okay. And then I'm just going to agree. Well, you know, I have not been reading Age of Ultron, and unfortunately I have been tricked into buying two Age of Ultron tie-in books that I did not want to read because I wasn't paying attention and I accidentally picked them Well, what's them wrong up. with Age of Ultron? Why don't you like it? Well, you know, first off, it's not in continuity, so... It's happening out of con continuity. So there's... I mean, and I know that things that do happen in continuity don't always stick and they don't right. always stay and there are retcons, but I like the illusion that there's like... it's This is something that's happening in this continuity well, that's for real. It's yeah, going to change shit. And you brought something up where because it... I mean, like I said, it could end and we could be completely wrong by the way it ends. <gasps> right. But right now, there is no threat of consequence. Yeah. Like, there is no threat that... And, and then and then on top of that, it's just some fucking story where they, they're getting their asses kicked the whole time by some fucking super strong robot who just wants to kill everybody for right. no fucking real good reason. And, like, you know, it's just... And it's like, he, when, when the fucking... When the bad guy is so good <gasps> that he can see what you're doing in the past and send somebody from the future to the past to thwart you, like, I don't care. Like, I don't want to read that. It's too depressing. I'm, it's just, I'm having a brainstorm right now. Like while I'm not while we're doing this, okay, bear with me. Age of Ultron is happening out of continuity and out of time, right? Mm -hmm. And we're not really seeing the effects of it in the Marvel universe. Yeah. But what if we are? Because in Secret Avengers and in some of the other Avengers titles, Black Nick Fury's been showing up, and they haven't explained why he's suddenly black. Mm -hmm. And Agent Coulson's in there. I did notice Coulson. And Coulson's in there. Mm -hmm. And like, so they like could use Luke this Cage, time travel story to like explain Luke a lot Cage, of... quote unquote, died in Age of Ultron. Mm -hmm. What if maybe the Luke Cage that we know and love comes back, and now that's why he's the Black? Holy crap! Maybe we are starting to see the effects of Ultron. Maybe in I, the continuity. I hope, I hope you're right. Because I need them to start explaining why, like, one of my most beloved Nick Fury characters is now the Sam Jackson Nick Fury. Right. In, in major, in like regular Marvel. Well, I can tell you why, but it's not. But I mean, I could, yeah, I mean, but, <laughs> but, but I need know. to explain, God damn yeah, it. I, know, I, I know. need to explain. My American brain. Yeah. Tell me how. Tell me how it happens. Holy crap, maybe we are watching the effects of Age of Ultron in the Marvel continuity happening isn't, right now. Isn't Angela supposed to come back in the Age of Ultron or something? Yeah, they are talking about it because uh, um, Neil Which, Gaiman. Yeah. Got the rights back. Yeah. And but technically, is that's, he just doing this to be a dick? To be a slap in the face to Jim, Jim Lee? He's Neil Gaiman. He can do whatever the fuck he wants. Oh, no, McFarlane, not Jim Lee. McFarlane. No, not Jim Lee. Yeah, it was, it was sorry, McFarlane. McFarlane. Yeah. Yeah, McFarlane claims. Well, I was reading the whole yeah. thing about their little cat fight yeah. about it because, you know, Image was made for creator owned rights. Right. Gaiman came on, created the character of Angela, created some other characters. But because it was McFarland's property. But yeah, he was trying to say that he didn't have rights to those characters, which is kind of back, up. backpedaling a little bit yeah. on your fucking mission statement there, but whatever. Yeah. Uh, especially, like, I mean, it's so horrible to blatantly take credit for something that you did not create. Yeah. Because then, of, like, uh, you know... And it's, like, and it's not even, like, for she's legalities. Fucking, is, she, is Angela worth fighting over? I mean, like, is she I think any like, character created by Neil Gaiman is a hot property, no matter what. Yeah, because Angela's everyone is somebody's favorite character. Yeah, I remember. I, I guess so. Yeah, like I don't know. But yeah, just it's like just... I love Mudbug. <laughs> <laughs> if Neil Gaiman created Mudbug, Mudbug would be the most popular mutant <laughs> in the X Men universe. 
Oh, Mudbug. It all comes back to Mudbug. It does. It all comes back to Mudbug. Mudbug's actually the whole inspiration for this podcast. <laughs> he is. He's our Let's spirit animal. The, the Mudbug podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, anything else? Any other polls? You, you... No, I just felt good to have that theory out there in the yeah. world all of a sudden. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Never good. Well, yeah, Age of Ultron. Not for me, but maybe it's, um, but maybe it's maybe bigger than I realize. Who know? knows? Well, we should point out it's not over yet, and you've only seen the beginning, and it might get really good. Well, I just wish they'd quit doing these friggin' tie-ins all over the place. Like, let me just have one title. Well, right there, that's your main problem. You just wish you could re- read your regular stories. Yeah, that's I it. I don't need all the goddamn tie-ins I will. The I will say about the tie-ins that they're just giving them to other writers Yeah. to do. Oh, yeah, yeah. I will say that. Yeah, that's you good. Know? I mean, at least they're doing that, but still at the same time. It's like, I know that they feel like this is making them a lot of money. Right. You know, and I get that. But at the same time, you're tiring readers out with this shit. Like, you can't do it all the time. You know, yeah. like, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta ride that line, man. And, like, they're just, you know, as usual, getting too greedy. Oh, corporations getting too greedy. Oh, surprise. You know. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, so how about we uh, go go to the questions? All right. right let's move on to the Twitter <laughs> Questions. Twitter yeah, questions. questions. I like the fact that you point to him, like, okay, now it's the part yeah, where you, you announce the next thing that we're going to do. Where you interrupt me. <laughs> and Eventually, we're going to realize the structure here. Okay. Gotcha. So, let's uh, let's start with, we'll, we'll go to Twitter. Okay. We got one, uh, I, I, I wouldn't mind talking about Mark Quandren's question of what do you think of the artwork of Bill Sienkiewicz, who did Electro Assassin and Stray Toasters, and I fucking love Bill Sienkiewicz and I have like a print of his that I had signed by him like for me and it's framed in my house but I love the fact I I would give anything to have his original artwork for Dazzler the movie like the cover he did for that like I would kill oh, I would I, I forgot would that he did that for it I would that was the best part of he the did, movie he did a ton of Dazzler covers it was awesome really? um, but I love that guy he's he's just he's amazing he's just such an amazing artist I, I don't even know where to begin good question for a good shout out I know, yeah. man. It's like... We didn't even plan that, too. <laughs> I know, right? Um, do we want to... Let's see. Oh, yes. We are going to talk about this. Okay. Assuming... Oh, this is DC Cantel. Mm-hmm. Uh, assuming Star Trek The Next Generation were rebooted, who would you cast as the new TNG crew? That is... Go. Okay. So I said... Immediately, I said... Tom Hiddleston as Data, obviously. Put but him in like, everything. But I feel like that's that's obvious. I feel like that's like not some Put him in fucking everything. brilliant idea. That seems like an obvious thing. But the thing is, though, like, who on earth are you going to get to play Picard, you know? Oh, I know, I know. I have a really good idea for Picard. Really? We just called Patrick Stewart and bring him back. I know, right? <laughs> we just... We just he, the man does not pretty... age. <laughs> he yeah. does not age. He, and he's a he's badass. To, he's no, I don't... Well, then he's he's even more old and war worn well, and bitter and I, I think that the next gen should can and should be rebooted, but I think it, it still should be like in like, I don't know, twenty years or something. You know, you, we need to go a little know further. Because they're from doing it. such a good job with the new Star Trek yeah. movies. Right. Those like, are yeah, let those like, I don't want do this I don't want to be overkill. Because at one point we did have right. like Next Generation and Deep Space Nine. And, and Voyager. And, and yeah, and it's just it, it almost did that. become like Star Trek overkill. Yeah. Yeah, I want to see a Star Trek story about where Will Wheaton is today. <laughs> like, is he commanding a spaceship, finally? I, what does he do when he's Has, has Will Wheaton's time come to finally be yes, the that, hero that the Star Trek universe needs? In all of those next-gen episodes, they're always, like, setting him up. He always solves the problem for everyone. Yeah. He's always the hero. He's like, the boy? Well, <laughs> the boy? Well, no, but if you remember, what happened was that he actually had a special gift where he could not just solve, like, time... Like solutions, he could actually see time and stop time and control time. I did not. And see then that, he so, took no. off with the traveler. Oh, really? Yeah, the traveler. Really? The traveler came back. Had been watching him for a while, and then one day they just both like concentrated about something, held hands, and disappeared. You're telling me that's the end of the whole story for him? Well, I did. He did show up in like movies, uh, as like a cameo, like yeah. in the beginning scenes, like if they're having like a really nice dinner or something like that. Yeah. But no, Will like Wesley Crusher, because I think we feel like we're talking about. This is actually Will right. Wheaton. Right, this I know. This is Wesley Crusher. Yeah, I guess, I guess. Wesley Crusher. <laughs> but Wesley Crusher, like, they all kept putting the pressure on him that he was going to be a great, like, Starfleet something something. Yeah. But his future was something else. Yeah. I mean, okay. So it has been figured out. And I actually really, you know what? I'm going to put this out there right now. I do watch his tabletop show on Geek and Sundry. I'm calling Will Wheaton out right now. I want a game of Talisman. <laughs> like, even if the episode, I, I just want to see the episode happen. 
I think it's possible. But I want to I want to play some Talisman with Will I, Wheaton. I think that's entirely possible. I think that's a good goal to have, and I, I think, think it's it is, a reachable goal. It's a reachable goal. I think that it could. I happen. want that. I, I it's a good goal to have. Um, well, let's let's move on to some Facebook questions. Okay. On Facebook questions, there's a bunch of really good ones on here. I was looking at earlier. No, no, no. Um, Let's see, a lot of Guardians of the Galaxy questions, lots of, what do you think about the new X-Men? Yeah. I think we keep ranting about that a lot. We've ranted about that a lot Yeah, yeah I'm just week. really not excited about X- X-Men Days of Future Past. I'm really not. Oh, like, I'm not. And there's a Justice not, League film question. Yeah, and I'm not excited about that one either, you know? Well, what, I, why I, do people keep asking about the Justice League movie? I don't know. Like, it because, even... because the Avengers is coming out again, and it's everyone's like, whoa. Well, the Avengers are now having two movies, and Justice League hasn't even caught up yet. And it's like... I feel like there's too much to. pressure on the creators well, of you the know Justice what? League right now. Here's the, the thing. I want to know why the studios keep letting the rumors perpetuate. Yeah. Well, well Like, like oh, it's I not mean, going to happen. Oh, it is going to happen. Oh, we do have somebody connected. Oh, no, we don't have something connected. R- right. It's like they're, they are putting out they, stories. They let information out. Yeah. Like, yeah. well, maybe we will bring back... Uh, are uh, they like beta testing it? Like, what about this idea, guys? You yeah, like, like just throwing like kind yeah, of. like focus groups. Like, yeah. well, what if we did bring back Batman for uh, Justice League and it's the Christopher Nolan Batman? Okay, that's like, an interesting idea. Yeah, I hadn't looked at it like that. I looked at it like okay, these stories are just getting out and people are destroying it and put like negative <laughs> energy in the in the air and it's just like would make the writers <clears throat> really frustrated. And I think one of the smartest work. things they could do with a like, Justice League movie. Can we just fuck you and your origin stories? I'm Please tired of it. Fuck. And if you're gonna put five, six, seven heroes in the same film who you haven't done any sol- solo films yet for, yeah. and your big plan is to spin each character from the Justice League movie out into their own franchises, yeah, yeah. like fuck you're you. Doing it I don't need to see the origin story. I don't need. To hey, see uh, shit's happening. Earth's like, about to like, blow up. Just, just put the call out. Just and let everyone figure out that Wonder Woman is really fucking badass. Animate it. Just An- animate, animate it. Just, it. Animate. just please animate just it. Just animate it. Right, well, let's not beat this into a well, stone. Well, um, so somebody asks, are Duh. you a Whedon fan? Terry Edmond, are you a Whedon fan from the beginning or just hopped on the bandwagon with everyone else since the Avengers? Fighting words. <laughs> Fighting I know, words. I know, Terry. you, you got to be careful saying that sort of stuff around here. I own every single season of Angel on DVD, like, and I love that fucking show. The show was good. <laughs> it was really good. I, I'm not as big into Buffy just because I don't like Buffy, the main character, I like her supporting cast. The best thing about Buffy the Vampire Slayer was the Scooby Gang. Yeah, that was the best 100%. part because she was such a bitch all the time. I mean, well, I don't know. You did time. see how many times Joss Whedon yeah, killed off that character in the show, right? Yeah, he did. Like, they yeah, were going to kill her off this week you again. Know, yeah, and it, <laughs> and I, I did watch Serenity. I watched Serenity. I'm not a rabid Serenity person, but I enjoyed it. I am. I I'm a brown coat. Um, hard. You know, I I also when it was coming out. Uh, on the internet, the mm. Doctor Sing Along blog. Yeah, Doctor Horrible Sing Along. I did see that. I was waiting each week for it to come out. So I guess you could say that uh, I am a Whedon fan from whatever beginning. Yeah, that, I mean, <laughs> that I've I've been watching him grow for a long time, and I've always thought that he was extremely talented. And well, I was, you're just so cool, aren't you? Well, I was at WonderCon the other day, and somebody was like, "I'm just so glad to see somebody in Hollywood get smart enough." To put that guy in a position to make them some fucking money, because that guy's really talented. Well, fo- well guess know? what? Like, I mean, well, and they finally it? put him in the right. Was it spot. Fox that dropped the ball on his yeah. shows? Oh yeah, Fox dropped the ball okay. on. Okay, uh, so Black. who has all the uh, other franchises that we really want to see them let go? Uh, Fox. Well, no, because I well. Like Fox has X Men. Fox has yeah. Fantastic Four. Yeah. Fox. I think Fox just lost. Daredevil, Daredevil rights. They did just lose Daredevil rights, but which is good. how cool is it, like, oh, you keep canceling my shows? All right, I'm going to go direct the biggest fucking yeah, film like, of the year. Like, fuck you. Yeah. Like, like and I, uh, I, love, I love that for him. Like, yeah. I love that for him. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, fuck you. You know, I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Well, I've got something to say about the Avengers real quick. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like, I've noticed that there are a lot of people out there that are upset about the fact that the Avengers has gotten so much attention since it came out. Like, that so many people think it's so great. That they're like, oh, it wasn't that good. Oh, uh, why do you, like... You know, the director, Josh Whedon, so much, you know? All this, like, negativity about it. And it's like, you have to realize, no one expected the Avengers to ever be as good as it was. It's amazing that it was as good as it was. Yeah. Everyone it could have a- easily been a terrible movie. Everyone like, Just was- another comic book movie. But instead, it changed it, our expectations for We are in a post-Avengers movie world now. We That's are. right. We and are. I think everyone was expecting, like, this, like, ego clash train wreck of a film. 
Yeah. yeah. And where everyone's right. just trying to one-up each other and being cooler in it. It's exciting that yeah. it worked so well, and it means, oh, look at all the possibilities we could have now in movies. Remember when we were talking about... We're not saying it's the greatest movie of all time. Right. But, but it's it, great for what it was. It, it upped the ante. And especially remember we were talking last week about stop casting celebrities and just cast the right actors for the job. Mm-hmm. I really yeah. feel like yeah. that's why that movie works really well. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you, you got the... Finally, Mark Ruffalo as Hulk... Oh, he and, just killed and it. And it's not just that. Like, his Bruce Banner was awesome. Yeah, no, his Bruce Banner was perfect. I love no. the way he played it. Everything um, worked. But I think, you know, anytime a movie gets too much hype behind it, even if the movie's good, there's just going to become a huge community that just gets angry and upset about yeah, it. That's why. Yeah. Well, I we, want to see those things do good. I don't get it. I want to see those of, things blow up. comic book movies, we are asked what comic book we would love to see you turn into a movie that we know would never actually happen, but that we're bummed on. Hmm. I'm going to say Uncanny X-Force, Remender stuff. If that Remender run was the like, best. And man, if you could do that Dark Angel saga shit, like somehow figure out how to do that, I would that'd watch be the it. best. Oh my god, I would watch it. That I don't. Oh man, like I, I want to like dig deep. Like I'd love to see Luther Strode become a film. Oh, that would be awesome. I mean, the, whoever whoever directed fucking Scott Pilgrim should do that shit too. Edgar Wright. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yes, please. That's yes. That would be great. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Make it happen now. Please. I'll take it. Do I like this question. Do you comic book? <laughs> do you comic book? I do. <laughs> uh, who, Andre asks, who does my hair? It's me. It's really <laughs> we'll that expensive to do this shit. Like, how about somebody else do it? So I do it. It's DIY. Back to Twitter. Let's see. Oh, hey, hold on. This is a good one. If you could pick one thing to change about Superman, what, what would, would it, it be? be? By Seth Schoenberg. There you go. Seth, good question. Um, I wouldn't make him so fucking immortal. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. There's... Uh, man, that's a really tough question. Because, I mean, he's just... He's Superman. He can do anything. He just... Yeah. How about know? making him into a bad guy? Which was what they did in the Injustice Gods Among Us... Video game. Is that, the, is that the official? Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah that's, that's the idea. I saw a review on the story a couple of days ago, and it was really interesting, and they made him, he's the villain, basically, of the plot, but he doesn't, he, he becomes a villain because he's tired of all these bad guys just getting to run amok and all the crime and problems on the earth, and he's like, I'm going to solve it once for all, and he just starts killing people. He kills the Joker in, like, this one scene. It's pretty awesome. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's kind of cool to look at. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, uh, let's see. One thing I would change about Superman. Um, well, I, honestly, maybe just get rid of the secret identity. Yeah, yeah. I would do that. Yeah, I would I'm, actually I'm get rid of Clark Kent. I'm on board with that because it's like he's done that, you know, and like he doesn't need to. He's fucking Superman. He doesn't fucking need to do that. Like I understand that maybe he wants that human aspect to himself. It's or just whatever, not worth but, it. But at the same time, yeah, it's just like I don't, you know. I I was also really on board when Warren Ellis was writing uh, the Authority way back in the day, mm-hmm. and they had Apollo, and now he's part of Stormwatch and the DC Fifty Two and all that. But Apollo was the gay version of Superman. Yeah. And then, um, oh God, now the other character, I forgot, Night Something, was the gay version oh, of Batman. Uh, uh, right. Wow. Oh. I can't remember, but. Night, Apollo and Dilla. Yeah, exactly. But they were like in a couple, and it was a really big, like, maybe Batman and Superman just have the hots for each other. And that was such an awesome story to write. Yeah. And that, read. Yeah, yeah. No. I'd make him gay. I'd make him just, gay just, as the day is long. Right? He's super. <laughs> no, I, I agree, though, about taking away the Clark Kent persona. Like, it's like, come on. Like, it's, yeah. you know, it's like, be a human or not. You know, you're never going to be one. Especially if you're Superman and you're constantly like, oh, I have a secret identity and I can't let the people around me get in harm's way if someone finds out my secret. It's like, well, why are you, if you're Superman and your entire life is saving people and trying to live up to be, like, a better example for the human race, then why the fuck would you be so stupid? Is they have a secret identity and put all your friends and family in harm's way. Right. right. Like, what's the point? Yeah, I know. I know. It's, it's super, it. a hard one. You know, he's a hard one to write. Like, and I, I really... Yeah, like, I loved, especially when Millar did Red Sun, the Elseworld story where, mm-hmm. what if he crash-landed in Soviet oh, Russia? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, no secret... No! He, that was such an awesome, awesome concept. Yeah. That was actually one of the best Superman stories I've read in a really long time. <laughs> I need to read it. I haven't read it yet. It's amazing. I know. I know. Uh, Gabe Petrie asks, why is Shatterstar gay? That was my favorite dude. Fuck, I don't want my favorite superhero to be gay. 
<laughs> wow. <laughs> Look at this. But here's the funny part. I like the fact that you capitalize whenever you write the word gay. <laughs> gay. Why is it gay? Uh, you know, it's, I, you know, I'm not against it. I'm Be not ag- correct here. I'm not against it. I, because it's, it's ironic to me that they would make Shatterstar gay because he is a Liefeld character and it kind of feels like a little, a prod towards Liefeld. Like a little like nudge. Being like, yeah. your character's fucking gay, bro. Like, you know, we made him gay. Not and, like, that there's anything wrong with that. Not that there's any, well, obviously, like, I don't fucking give a shit about that sort of stuff. Yeah, we don't. Um, I mean, but, if anything else, we keep championing like gay characters but yeah, I, I'm time. sure it was probably just a rib Liefeld. Like, I would assume that they probably did that just to, like, bum Liefeld out, you know? <laughs> like, I, that's what I honestly think is what happened How there. great would it be? It's just like, hey, we're really still banking on that Deadpool movie, aren't you? Okay, we just killed off Deadpool in the Marvel Universe. <laughs> like, you what? Yeah, sorry, dude. Let's do a Shatterstar like, movie. Let's do a Shatterstar let's movie. Let's do a Mojo movie. Let's do, like, a whole... See, that's a, that's another movie that will get made that we'll never see. A oh, Mojo yeah. movie would be oh, badass. Oh, yeah. Mojo's hilarious. Like, that shit's so weird. I'm all about it. What are you not reading right now? A lot of stuff. A lot of DC <laughs> a stuff. A lot of DC stuff. <laughs> a lot of DC stuff. Unfortunately. Oh, yeah. Now we're on to week three of having two issues of Constantine sitting in my house. Oh, that really? That I still haven't read. Oof. Yikes. Oof. Yeah. I'm still, I still want to hear what you think about it. Mm. Uh, I, I do, this is just because I want to answer this question because I'm an asshole. Do it. I want to talk about my own shit here. Uh, Be a dick. Charles Go. McMillan, hi Charles, asks, where did I find my cat? Well, well Charles, it's a romantic story. <laughs> I found her in Savannah, Georgia. I was holed up in this. Fucking crumbling Victorian mansion that had been split into five different shitty apartments. It was all falling apart. The roof leaked. It was terrible. It was it's no basically the house from Fight Club. It was yeah. terrible. It, it actually really was. Not like I'm serious. They there was just like a couch upstairs, like under a bunch of junk that we stole that somebody just left there. Well, like, every from, every house in the Savannah is the house from Fight Club. Yeah, it's really oh, okay. gross down there. It's really ghetto. Just and give they, you an idea. And they have a pretty bad problem with strays. And I was driving home from Kroger, uh, getting my groceries, and uh, my roommate was like, hey, there's a cat under the house. And I was like, well, don't don't fuck with me. And they're like, no, really. And so I went down there, and I saw this little cat. And I was like, come here, little kitty. And you know how strays, like, never come up to you? Yeah. She totally came up to me and was, like, purring and, like, covered in fleas. Oh, and, like, man. just the cutest thing you've ever seen. It was so pitiful. And I was just like, well, shit. So I took her upstairs, and... Kept her for like seven years and there we she go. died in October, which was really sad, but it's okay. You know, I'm okay with it. It's just, it was a bummer. You know what? I'm not afraid to talk about cats on a comic book podcast. <laughs> uh, my friend was asking me if I was thinking about getting my dog a cat, which is kind of true. My dog, like, Does spends, your dog need, need my, a cat? My, I think my dog needs a cat. Yeah. I yeah. named my dog Tesla because I'm a huge She's very Nikolai cute. Tesla fan. She has the softest ears. She is the sweetest. I mean, she's but like the temperament of a cat. So I decided, like, I think I might go get a kitten this week, mm-hmm. and I want to name the cat Schrodinger. Oh, that's awesome. And then I can I wait, because, like, I, like, in about 10 to 15 years, that joke will totally pay off. <laughs> <laughs> I keep having fantas- kitten fantasies lately. I'm, it's like, it's, it's almost been six months, and I, you know. We might, we might have to go kitten shopping. Well, I realized the other day, talking to T-Bone, that all of my uh, sleeping problems mm-hmm. have really started since, since Billy died. Oh. Because I used to, like be really excited about going to sleep because I had this animal that was excited about going to sleep with me and like then I go lay down and she would curl up with me and we'd like both go to sleep and we're all you know, So and send it's... all your cats to uh, the Comic Book well, 19 know, show Care of T-Bone I, I can't just like buy one though you know what I'm saying? No I'm an adult I feel, like, I have to like like find I don't know it has to be some romantic story like because she was like my familiar and I feel like I can't just go buy you know uh, I don't know Lightning do. doesn't strike twice like that oh. Not with cats I know. No, impossible. But I do, if I get a kitten, I do want to teach it how to use the toilet. I have seen cats do that. I want to do that. Because then you can take them anywhere, and it won't be a problem, because you don't need a litter box. They can just go to the bathroom. Okay, I think we've topped out our cat. Wait, you don't it. want to talk no, about cats can, using the toilet? I keep talking for This is, no, hours. I think we need to finish the next 15, 20 minutes with just cats using uh, the toilet. Well, how about we how about we switch over to some Game of Thrones questions? Go. Um, so. Because nobody wants to know about nobody that. Nobody wants to know about that. So, Why do you keep talking about Game of Thrones? No one cares. I know. No one. Uh, thoughts on Game of Thrones season three, episode uh, four? Uh, fucking awesome. Oh my god. Like, oh man, the past two episodes have been killer. And somebody asked also, Jeremy, did 
Did you blow a load? Spoiler when... alert. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. If you haven't watched episode if four If you're not yet. caught up, don't fucking listen to this. <laughs> did you blow a load when Daenerys calls out to the Unsullied in High Valyrian Sunday night? And how many times did you rewind and watch it again? Oh my god. Like, I was just so... That scene... That's... Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're talking about episode five right now, you realize. Well, what? Get beef... It's out. Fucking watch it. Well, you don't can't tell this. spoiler alert for episode four and then talk no, about episode I was, five. No, this is two different questions, dude. All right. Yeah, just season, the episode four was awesome. <laughs> episode five was awesome as well. Okay. Okay. But you have to do spoiler alert. For... Spoiler alert for all Game of Thrones <laughs> questions. Um, <laughs> man, I, when I watched that scene where she, she took down old good master Crescent, it's exactly what I wanted to do to boost Collision. Like, everything that she did is, ex- like, my experience with this fucking Collision shop when I, my car got hit by this crazy Mexican lady, uh, it, it was a nightmare. And I wish that I could have, like, burned them alive and then taken everything that they had. I wish I could have done that. Because I felt exactly like she felt when that because guy was talking to her. Because they screwed you over and you had to t- take the car back, like, three or four times. Oh, my God. And they, like, no oh, they, those, but they talked Was it you. one of those, like, like swindle, like, operations where, like, oh, no, everything just suddenly started going wrong on your yes, car. Yes, that was exactly uh, it. And they talked to you like you're retarded because you're a woman, you know? Oh, good times. Oh, not then, to mention, I was there. I, I went with you that one time. <laughs> And the guy was complaining about, he was trying to make up a story about why Spin this one wheels. random part stopped, stopped working. And he basically explained that it's, you know, well, it's, it's this woman down at the, you know, shop. She's a woman. He, so she's she's not, a woman. She did not so know. So seriously, she's just like, know. so it was this woman. Yeah. It's her fault. Yeah. yeah, but well, because she's a uh, woman, she screwed up the order or something. Oh, and, God. She, yeah, she didn't know my electrical panel was ruined or something. From a, from a rear accident? But, but like, I don't but, know, But man. he was talking to me like I was going to be like, oh, right, women. Pff, I know. Morons. Fuck pop culture. Let's, let's, let's just yeah. start ranting about stupid shit. Oh, my God. Let's just... Uh. Ugh, it, was, it was such a nightmare. It was such a nightmare. But yeah, it was awesome. Like, I just... I loved it. I, I loved what they've been doing with Jamie and um, Brian. Like, they've been acting so well together. And I've, they're my favorite odd couple in the book, and I'm, I've been really enjoying them on screen. Seeing them do all their thing, you know, and everything's... The only thing I will say is, is Thoros of Myrrh doesn't necessarily look like I would have anticipated, but, you know, it's it's not bad. It's, you know, yeah. it, you know it's yeah. just a little different from what I, what I was anticipating. I am disappointed there's no strong Belwas in the, in the show. Apparently they cut that character. I'm a little bummed on that. But whatever, you know, again, it's not you're critical. Well, but. I think it's really important to, po- to point out that um, with the Game of Thrones TV show... They are, there are so many characters not appearing. Mm-hmm. Like, there are entire storylines yeah. and subplots that have just gone by the wayside because in order to be able to do all of that... Yeah, it's a lot. It's so and it's, much. And the thing is, is it's only going to get worse. You know what I'm saying? Really? It's like, there's only more and more. I mean, yeah, some characters are dropping off, some new characters are coming on, but okay. things... like. The beginning of the book, I mean, it's a lot easier to do the first season uh, on the first book because you have everyone starting out in this one spot. Mm-hmm. And then as things progress, all these characters, you know, are really like... It starts to kind of just, like spider web out into different, yes. like, okay. And so that's the thing that's going to be kind of tough for them is like, how do you do an episode addressing everyone's thing? Mm-hmm. You know, even though it's like you can't get to everybody in one episode. No, there are. I mean, it is getting yeah. to the point now because, I mean, Castle Affairs. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, that entire characters don't show up for one or two episodes right. because they have to focus on other elements of the story yeah. to, to move that forward. Yeah. And, and yeah. the thing is, too, it's so crazy because every scene is so pivotal for each character, especially in the last episode in episode five, that you forget, like, every scene is so good mm-hmm. that you forget about, like, complete, like, I co- totally forgot about Varys and Tyrion's thing for a minute. And then I remember back to it, I was like, oh, my God, that was such a good scene, too. Like, yeah. every yeah. single scene was this, good. This season so far has kind of just escalated. Every episode has gotten better and better. In my opinion. I, I will say this. They have treated this book so well. They really have. They, they've treated the source material amazingly. And yeah. usually when this sort of thing happens, you you cringe and you freak out and yeah. you're worried about what you're going to be watching. But Yeah. Um, T-Bone, there's a question for you. hey What, uh, did you What's dig that? Oblivion? Because they said that they know that I was not feeling it. They want to know what you felt about Oblivion. I felt like Oblivion was... Uh, how do I feel today? I have a different opinion every day of it. Um, today, being a week from whence I saw it, I have not continued to think about it, and that is my judge for movies of how good they were or not. It's like, do they stick with me? Do I keep thinking about about them after a few days? 
Um, I thought about Oblivion a couple of times, but it didn't stick with me that much. So uh, I guess it didn't impact me that much. However, I really like the drones. I think the movie would have been better if it was just about the drones and they didn't try <laughs> drones to wedge are awesome. ten different sci-fi elements from ten different sci-fi movies that were derivative of things that happened. <laughs> and way all of those soon. movies better than Oblivion, unfortunately. Yes, unfortunately. Um, I really like the soundtrack of Oblivion. I think that oh the, we listen to that M83 soundtrack, ah. and it makes you think, wow, what a great movie. I want to see it over again. You're like, oh, wait, I already saw it. Yeah. It wasn't that good. Like, but the soundtrack is ten times better than the movie. It is. It's amazing. You know what? I would I would actually buy Oblivion and just listen to it on DVD while I'm drawing or something. Uh, that's, that, that's a really good point. So basically, Oblivion's like kind of forgettable, but really great if it was in the background somewhere. Yes. Right. And Got there are great visuals. special effects. Yeah. Like the, the scenes with the drones, seriously, um, I laughed. I was, I was slapping my knees every time I saw him. It was so much fun to see that drone 166. Yeah. When he <laughs> shot like backwards and forwards, those things were badass. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I think if the movie were just a simple story about the drones doing stuff like that in the future and what a problem drones would be, it'd be fine. Yeah. But unfortunately, yeah. that's just one plot. Right, one plot out of many yeah. you know, that are not, not, and none of them are successfully like carried through. You know, really. Um, well, what other sci-fi films are you guys looking forward to right now? Uh, definitely well, Elysium. May is coming up, and May is going to be a big time yeah. Because I wanted to. I don't know about a... After Earth. I'm a little like I like. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't like Will Smith. Really, I mean, I don't hate Will Smith, but I don't know. I'm just it's it's tired it's of not Will Smith. Smith. It's it's the director Shyamalan. I don't hate. I don't. And I'm like the only person who defends him all. The no, time. no, no. And I defend him on certain on certain aspects. I still love. I'm glad that he's doing something that he didn't. I don't, or I don't believe he wrote it. Did he write that? I don't know. Oh, we should look gosh. that up. Jeez. Well, while you're looking that up, I will say that I'm very excited for May and the summer movie season's officially starting. We've got all these movies to see. It's a little too soon. I'm not quite ready for it. I don't. But think. I mean, like, don't get me wrong. I still defend M Night Shyamalan on. I think uh, Sixth Sense is amazing. Oh yeah. I love Unbreakable. Fucking Unbreakable, I, Sixth Sense, Signs. I love Signs. I love Lincoln I thought all three of those movies were great. Then something happened where I was kind of, I was waiting for a movie where there wasn't the twist anymore. Like, just start telling yeah. me a really good story, because you've yeah. gotten pretty good at that. And well, so when that village, woods, blind person, oh my god, it's actually the modern world. Right. Sorry if you, I, sorry I, if you I haven't seen that see film, it. it I didn't sucked. even see it. I heard it was terrible. I didn't even see it. It was bad. He did, he did help write the screenplay for After Earth, so. Ah, shit. Yeah. But you know what? <laughs> I will say this, though. If you never watched uh, the movie, I think it was straight to DVD, uh, Devil. And oh, the was, Elevator Bill film. It was written film. by him. It was him, not straight to DVD. Was, was, oh, I don't know. I don't remember it ever being, I don't ever remember seeing it in theater. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, Devil, it was written by him. But and I think maybe produced, but not directed by him, and it was really good. It is really it's good. It's really surprisingly Morality good. Tale story. Well, maybe. Well, then what was the other one with Mark Wahlberg and my girlfriend Zoe? Oh yeah, uh, uh, that the happening. That the was, happening. Yeah, that I, one. Th- that one had me until the very end when you're just kind of like, that's it. It was a little weak sauce. Yeah, it was a little weak sauce. But I, I don't Wahlberg, care because it, but, it, it had know. Zoe in it, and I'm gonna watch anything she's in. I I'm a huge fan of Lady in the Water. I don't give a fuck what anyone says. That was good. Everyone hates it, but me. I don't know why. That was good. Ooh. Oh, I wouldn't say that. I Lady know. In the water. Ooh, my, my credibility is shot. You know, oh. but it's a fucking it's a fucking bedtime story. Like it is a fucking bedtime story, and. It's like it's so good, huh. it's just, and it's all it's all told in one place. Like it takes place in this one apartment building. Do you know how hard it is to make an interesting story staying in one place the entire time? I mean, <laughs> like, and it's fucking interesting. And Paul Giamatti gives amazing performance. Well, maybe we should go ahead and point out since you've already opened this can of worms on this movie, is that a lot of the reason why people don't like it is because the movie trailer it implied a completely different movie than what people got. Yeah, it was totally mismarketed. It looked like a scary horror movie with this crazy wolves. You know, yeah. and then you go here and it's like about a and fairy tale. And, you know, yeah, and there's some weird stuff in there. You know, it's not a perfect film by any means, but it is, I don't yeah. know, it's, it's all. And Bryce Dallas Howard, I mean, she's so ethereal in it. And it's like, I would help her. I would help her do whatever she needed to do. Like, I get it. Like, all right, let's not spend too much time on this movie that people are going to be angry. That I you cry like. every time I see Paul Giamatti do his little, like, monologue later oh. on. Oh. It's really sad. It's really moving. We're going to end the episode on that monologue. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> all right. So, uh, any yeah. Any other movies we need to bring up? Anything um, else? Oh, what is the uh, uh, Pacific There's... Rim? I'm excited about Pacific Rim. Giant fucking robots. I'm really ex- It looks like a, just a, the best middle finger to fucking Transformers franchise. I, 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 I cannot wait for Pacific Rim. Uh, I'm I cannot really wait excited. for gi- like giant mecha versus giant yeah. monsters. Mm-hmm. Yes. Give, give me all of that all day. Uh, all the movies I'm mostly looking forward to are coming up in the next couple of weeks. Iron Man 3 and Star Trek. 
Into Darkness. Oh, yeah, Star Trek. Oh. Can we talk about that Star Trek trailer for a second? Well, I don't know. If, I haven't seen the new one, I don't think. Is there a new trailer? Is there Dude, a new one? I, I didn't watch it. At one point... On purpose. Okay, I, here's the best part, because this is all about, you know, James T. Kirk, like, stepping up to the uh, to the bat, and he's like, all right, now I'm going to be the captain that everyone's telling me I'm going to be. Yeah. And uh, Sherlock is the bad guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a tough one. Which is, and that's kind of badass. But there's a scene where they go after him, and out, out of nowhere, this massive, hulking ship drops out of warp right in front of the Enterprise, mm-hmm. and like dwarfs it. Mm-hmm. And you just see James T. Kirk turn to his crew and go, "I'm sorry." Oh, uh, like, like just looks at the everyone on the bridge and just goes, "I'm." Sorry. Oh man. It, that's, that's and I mean I think the trailer is just pretty much the Enterprise just getting fucked up. Yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to I'm not to into it. like Enterprise torture porn, but right. you know, but it's it's gonna be good. It's <sighs> gonna be good. I just I like I, said, I just I'm so terrified that we're never gonna see another JJ Abrams Star Trek film because he's getting eaten by fucking Star Wars and but then again, isn't he only signed on to yeah, do yeah. one Star Wars he film? He said he's only doing the one. He's only doing the one. Okay, so maybe... Which I think is a good thing to say, is, at least. Which gives me hope. Which gives okay. me hope. Like, okay. I really hope that this is not the last Star Wars... Or Star, Star Trek. Trek film that I see from J.J. Abrams, because he's just... Man, just did such a phenomenal job with the first one. I'm, I'm, I just really this am is, not worried about the I'm glad one. you brought this up. Because we got... We got... <laughs> we need more material so we can fill some time here. J.J. Abrams, what do you think about him? I, I think he fucking talented motherfucker. I don't think I, he can do anything. I respect him for how well he handles other people's material. Yes. He, well, he has respect. I cannot... You know? Yeah. And, and he's I a think fan. He com- He's he a fan. He respects the material that he's handed. Yes. And he understands that it's important to a lot of people. Yes. At the same time, I'm getting really frustrated with him handling so many people's stuff. Right. right. Like... Well, I, well, let's see. Um, it took JJ to make Mission Impossible interesting again. Mm-hmm. It took JJ to make like freaking believers out of Star Trek fans, right? Uh, you know, but things like like eight millimeter, like I loved it, but it also really kind of rode on the shoulders of Steven Spielberg, yeah, because that was all Spielberg. Right. Like elements. And it, I mean, style. And, he was, and, it was intentional. He's intentionally doing Spielberg I mean, style. I mean, he was right. intentionally doing it, but it's still... I and I, and I'm, I mean it. Like, I think Abrams is just going to fucking just... Oh, everybody's cool. going to have to shut the hell up when Star Wars comes out. Star Trek 3, he's announced as a producer. Oh, thank God. But it's producer. Producer it so director, far. But... but at the same time, I want to see J.J. do his own thing. Like, I really, really, really want to see that. Well, I, mean, I think Super 8 was his own thing. What? Hold, no. hold on, IMDb. Hold Wait. on. Hold on, Can we... Un- untitled Cloverfield sequel, please. Thank you. But look at all these question marks. I know. Oh my gosh, untitled Cloverfield sequel. Ah, oh, I love Cloverfield. Cloverfield was good. Fuck you. Cloverfield, I Cloverfield was kind of his own thing, right? Dude, if you have a problem with Cloverfield, like go fuck yourself. Like that movie's good. Like I mean, I get it if you if it messes you up. Like if, if you're you have a motion at, sickness, right? Then. I get that, but I mean. Like you know, it, it was so scary for the first time seeing a giant monster because you're on the ground the entire time, and that's how fucking terrifying it would be. Like before, like Godzilla was kind of, you know, not to say Godzilla sucks or anything, it doesn't. But I mean, it's very schlocky. It's very like, yeah, humorous. You know, whereas like this I is think, not like I think the scariest is taking that seriously and trying to make a real yeah. I think the, I think one of the best parts about eight or uh, Cloverfield wasn't even just the monster and how scary that is. Mm-hmm. It's the little things that were coming off the monster's back chasing you down. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then all of a sudden, if you get Still, bit yeah. by one of those things, then you explode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like... Like, it's like the worst mosquito you know, bite ever. Let me let me tell you something that I like about J.J. Abrams that I see a lot of... What I like that he's doing that a lot of people aren't doing correctly. Okay. He understands sci-fi. Yeah, he, he does. He understands that it's philosophical, that it has, like, the core of it is, like, the human condition and our evolution as a, as a humanity and, and how our technologies impact, like, us and other people around us. You know, he right. understands sci-fi. And I see so many fucking screenwriters and fucking directors and producers making these sci-fi films who have no fucking clue about, you know, they just think you put it in the future and give someone a laser gun and you got sci-fi, you know? <laughs> and it's like, that's not it, you know? Ray guns equal sci-fi, and that's all you need to know. <laughs> like, and it's Point I, being, you want more philosophy in your sci-fi. I, I think, especially when it comes to Cloverfield, and to a certain degree, certain parts of 8mm, uh, mm-hmm. there's a very Hitchcockian take on it. Mm-hmm. What you don't show the audience, 
it now their imagination is starting to fill in the gaps yeah. and whatever the, the audience is picturing in their head is way scarier than anything you can come up yeah. with. Well, it was way scarier those... than the shit they came up with yeah. with fucking Super 8, I'll tell you yeah. that, because that shit sucked. God, Sorry, that monster, that monster, that monster design. character monster design. is horrible. That monster design ruined the entire film. And it wasn't it a bad film. It, it had me up until, like, oh, that's what it looks like? Fuck right, that. Yeah, okay, yeah. That, let's point out, that yeah. monster was over-designed. Weak. It was a giant spider that had psychic powers. Right. That was super intelligent. That could make that a spaceship by itself. through outer space. Right, out with, of junk that it found. You know. The I was dug also, holes that, that were lived in the around. earth, yeah. So this this creature just had like 20, too, 20 powers that were too, one too many things. But is, we can keep it in a cage. Right. Yeah. And like, the, this is my thing, okay? Like, I, I've watched a lot of creature features, mm-hmm. you know, in my day. And there are two different sizes, really, that you can go for in creature features. You can go for your kind of 10 foot, like big, yeah. whatever, you know. Little up to 10 feet type of, like, but not whatever. And then there's, like, Godzilla monsters, right? Totally. Like, they're huge. So it was in this weird in-between size where it was too big to, to be hide. a humanish, right? Si- you know? But it was too small to be, like, a Godzilla monster, so it was just really awkward. And, I mean, it just seemed like an afterthought. I don't even think that was his biggest problem at all. Okay, and remember you guys were talking about how, like, there's this over-design of the character? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, the it's basically fingers, like a Transformer. <laughs> All I could see when I saw the uh, creature's fingers was those look like the exact same hands that the Ninja Turtles have. <laughs> that was like I swear and like. Yeah, and, <laughs> it's, yeah I've already. And the human eyes at the end. It's just like I, I know, just don't. Care. But Super Eight had some really good scenes to it. I don't want to say that it was awful all around. I mean that scene with the little girl and the boy and they were well, watching yeah. the old film. But you could tell it had some good emotional parts. You could yeah. tell though that I mean wasn't he trying to shop this around for years or for a while before story. and then he ended up like having to add the monster to get it made. Oh, yeah, that's right. It started as one script that was just about the characters in their story of, of being uh, kids that were filmmakers, which was the most interesting thing, is seeing them I thought that was. The, yeah. I think that cast was awesome. Yeah. yeah. I mean, were like, kids. like I said, they were good going, actors for kids. Yeah, and it was going back to the whole Spielberg, like, Goonies troupe, and yeah. the E.T. kids, yeah. like... And they're they're on this this uh, adventure and some kind of, like, mysteries happening. Yeah. But the mystery the stand by me stuff. so over the top yeah. that, you know... It, it was no longer good. So wait, let me tell So what you're saying is the script was originally a really well-thought-out, character-driven yeah, I, story. Yeah, I, I believe J.J. Abrams only then, wanted to make it about that. And then everyone was like, no, you need a fucking monster? I, Basically. Yeah, oh, I, think, God. I think that he had to change it. And, and it felt like... it, And that's what it felt like to me. It felt like... Hey, look at these great scenes with these kids, and then felt forced. and then we felt and we had I had to stick this shitty monster in here. So fuck you, <laughs> you know, like, and it's like, well, they well, just don't it, make it. it I will, it I will, just did not work as well as it should. I'll have. give you this: that train wreck was fucking amazing. That was pretty cool. It was. That was, was badass. Really that was really sweet. All right. Well, so yeah. JJ. 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 Do it, dude. Man, that guy knows how to do some shaky cam action. Impress me. Yeah, he's. I can't wait. I'm, I'm a Star Wars fan. You know this. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure he'll do a good job. All right. All right, what else? Anything else? Is that uh, think, wrap it up for today? Was that, that's it, guys. Was that the episode? I think that might okay. be it. So what can we expect next week, guys? Uh, maybe the comics you're reading? Yeah, we can. you can expect more uh, talk about our polls of the week. We'll always we'll always go to the stack and talk about the issues that are yeah. coming out. We'll what, talk what, about... What are your top picks this week? Maybe you should... Throw I it have out. no... I, oh, top picks, for sure. Top picks, I would say... I, I put on mine... If, and if you don't know, every Wednesday I try to put out my top picks on Instagram and Twitter... Very, very smart. And when you say top picks, you mean what? These are books you're just reading or... Yeah, the top picks of my polls of the week. Sometimes if I... Maybe, skip, maybe it's even just a funny cat on the internet. And she's like, that's my pick of the week. <laughs> <laughs> well, if there are like no good comics, I will pick something else. Okay. Um, <laughs> and that's, it, that's entirely likely. I was trying to get you to be specific and say that, no, these are the books that I've read. And of those that I've read, they are the best. Yeah. Not just books I bought. Well, I'm glad that you specified well, that for Why her. would I because buy something we get a and lot not fucking read idiot it? comments who don't but, realize but, Oh, okay. Yeah, people always ask me, too, when I fucking put this shit up here. They'll be like, I'll, I'll put, like, oh, like, right now I have East of West in there. Uh-huh. You know, and they're like, is East of West any good? And it's like, dude, it's my fucking top pick of the week. <laughs> like, of course it's good. Like, fuck you. Like, why are you asking me that? But my top You know picks... what? Here, just to make sure people are really paying attention, next week, just pick your five, like... The worst issues yeah, ever. Yeah. And just go like, guys, you gotta read these. And just leave it really ambiguous like that. Just like <laughs> some people are just home going, the fuck, comic book girl nineteen? Yeah. What the hell are you thinking? I can't lead them astray. I don't have any money no. either, so That's true. I don't want anyone to waste. Well no, money. wait, Jupiter's Legacy was amazing. Yeah, I put it I put Jupiter's Legacy, Uncanny X Men, Young Avengers, East of West, and Haunted Horror as my Okay. I'm definitely on board so with far. 
the Young Avengers. Yeah. That that blew me away this week. Yeah. And um, I, it's not like my super pick, but I'm glad how Wolverine and the X-Men resolved. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give you that. Yeah. Like, I'm really glad how that storyline resolved. Yeah. I agree. Okay. I agree. Well, um, I guess that's... Episode that's two. That's it. Guys, we'll try to put chapter mark- markers in, and we'll try to actually get this up on iTunes soon. Yeah, we're still trying to figure this shit out, man. Like, I don't know. There's Dick. a two-week approval process, thanks to Apple. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, it's a nightmare to try to deal but with But if you really are kind of into this, um, don't forget the first two episodes are beta, and episode one are on YouTube, and we'll send a link for that, too. Yeah. Yeah. Alrighty, guys. All right. Well, over and out. Episode two, done. <laughs>